We're gonna talk about why the takeaway is so important for your ball striking and consistency. My dad had some interesting stuff going on in his golf swing. He wasn't striking it as good as I'd like, and, uh, and he was kind of a little bit, oh, oh, a bit left, a bit right, wasn't getting the consistency. And he had this very strange loop in his swing watch where the club was coming a little bit around here and looping in. And all of that was generally caused by the first move in his golf swing. So, so in the takeaway, when you're playing, what we want to do is what are we after in a takeaway? We want a coordinated move. We want the arms and the body coordinated and moving away together, right? That's the first thing. The second thing we want is when they do move away together, we want a few lines in play. We want the shaft line when the hands get to about hip height in line with the feet, and we want the face in line with or parallel with the body line, right? Those are a couple of checkpoints that we really, really need when we're in the takeaway. So the question is, how do we go about achieving those positions every single time? Very, very simply. All we do is, and what I got my dad to do, was take your lead hand, just have a small little set in the wrist, and from here, move the club back, straight back here. So left hand goes straight back, and put your right hand on. That is as simple as that. Very different to the person who moves this. Now, what's happening here? What you've got to remember, this golf club is a lever. There's a top end and there's a bottom end. If you move the bottom end, the top end moves out here. Okay? We don't want any lever taking, uh, uh, being activated at all in the first part of the swing. What we want to do is keep this lever nice and solid. So what we do is by moving the left hand here, all in one, this lever now is working as one unit. It's only when it gets to about here that we're going to allow the wrist to hinge and suddenly as that lever goes down, the head goes up. So we want to go straight back here, right hand goes on, then we go up. That's the only time the lever is activated. So let me show you from this angle. We don't want any lever working here. We don't want the club coming here. This hand's moving out here. We want a straight back movement, nice and coordinate here, right hand on top from this position, then we can work the club up in position. So let's have a look how we can go about working this. Nice and simple. So take a golf ball, just have a small little set in your left hand or your lead hand, move the club back here and just get a rhythm for that. Yeah, nice and simple. Or is it? You'll notice something else stuck at the end of this grip. What I've put here is a tee peg. One thing when I've worked on this drill with some people, what they sometimes do is they move their left arm and they're moving it online, but they're moving again, they're allowing the grip end or the butt end to move away from their body. What happens when that happens? Remember, this club's a lever. If the butt end moves away from the body, where's the head end move? It works around the body. We don't want that. So what we're doing is this T-peg now just helps you with a little reference point. As you move your left hand back on its own here with this little hinge, you're simply keeping that T-peg nice and close to your body. You'll notice here if there's a movement here, where's the T-peg gone? Immediately you can see it's gone away from your from your back leg. So, start to get a rhythm of that. You've now got a checkpoint here. Get a feel for that. Then just put the right hand in. Get a feel for what you're doing. Get a, a sensation here. It wants to be as rhythmical as possible. Work it up. Work it back down. Let's have a look at this. So a very nice strike. With the driver, we catch the ball on the uh, after the low point of the arc. Can you see the difference? So with drive, we catch it. There's a low point of, of the club, and it, we catch the driver on the way up. And with the irons, we catch it on the way down. So, what does this mean, and how, you, how can you practice this effectively so you can do this? So, I've got um, a very simple setup here. What I've got, a, I've got here is I've just laid a, a towel on the ground. Okay, you may have seen this drill before, but I've got an adapt adaptation. This. So, what you do is you place a golf ball. Maybe two, maybe, yeah, I would say about two, two and a half to three balls in front of the mat. Now, what you do here is this. You could start off 
and this can be just this can work almost immediately you could start off by just simply making some swings now clearly if you release this club and this club starts to bottom out too early it's going to start to strike that mat and you're going to get some instant feedback all right there's the first thing so by avoiding this mat you're naturally going to start to transfer your weight onto the front foot because your body's smart and your body's effective and this is the thing what i was doing with laura is i said to look if i give you exercise like this your body's smart and it, what it does, it self-organizes itself. It kind of works out in its own way how to miss that mat. And as a byproduct, naturally starts to produce good swing mechanics. So that's what we want to be able to do. So we get ourselves set and we're going to make some swings and we're going to set up here where the ball would be. And we're going to make some swings and just simply try and strike the mat after the golf ball. Now, I can do this because I've been doing it for a long time. But you know what, Laura and maybe you, you might find that you end up doing this. Great now you've got some feedback. You don't have to work out why you're doing it at this stage, right? All you've got to do is, is this is the point, you don't have to get, that's too complicated. Laura said to me and she goes, why, why did I do that? I said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for now. Just simply trust your body to kind of work the answer out so you get yourself set and just practice. The task is simply to miss the towel. That's the aim. You get the, the, uh, the technique for free, all right? So the task is to miss the towel. The problem is, it, this towel alone can just it can sometimes cause problems. So people do go like this, they just pick the club up in the end, hey, hey look, oh I've missed the towel. But as you know, I'm watching this, that's not the thing we want. So the little adaptation here is you grab a tee peg. And what you do is you now set up a little station where the ball, you've got this gap here, but then what you do is you put a tee peg pointing directly at the target. Because what did we say earlier? The low point happens after the golf ball. So we don't just want to miss this mat. We want the club to continue through the ball and to get hit the low point after the golf ball. So watch this. If you finish here, you're gonna miss, clearly gonna miss the tee. But if you, not only do you actually miss the mat, sorry, the, uh, the towel here, but then actually start to look at squaring the club face up to that tee. So we wanna try and hit this tee dead straight you're now gonna get the ball, and then the, the second goal is then to get the tee. This is gonna encourage this motion. Now, if you missed last week's video where I said, how do you, a good image would be striking the match through, you got this match here and you're striking the match. This is kind of the same old thing, but more importantly, this will give you some feedback. So watch this. I'm gonna line that up again, okay? I've put, I've, I've put this um, the tee peg, probably about two to three balls in front of the ball. And wanna watch this, if I do this, and I flick back and I, I've missed the tee peg. Why? Because what I've done is I've got very wristy and this is what Laura was doing initially. So she wasn't getting any real strike with this. So what we then did, so I, okay, she didn't know what she was doing. Why am I, why is it flicking on top and on the ground? Well, now you've got feedback. So the task I gave Laura was this, hit the ball and the tee peg and that's your goal. So you're gonna work on, look at this, I'm gonna strike the ball and then I'm gonna collect the tee peg. But I've also lined the tee peg up straight, so you try and hit the tee peg dead straight into the mat, into the, uh, into the net. Why is this good? Well, watch this. If you're trying to hit the tee peg straight into the mat, it's also giving you a wonderful image of getting the club face square. You're not gonna be doing this and this, all right? Let's have a look at this in action. So we get ourselves set, back and through. So I've nailed that ball and I've nailed the tee peg dead straight. So you start to set that station up. What I love about this is this, you're not gonna get it straight away, but now the difference is, you're gonna know why you haven't struck the golf ball because you've got some feedback, you've got some feedback from the towel. You're gonna know why the ball goes off in different directions because you haven't collected the club face up, all right? But there's one, another adaptation you can have with this. So we grab another ball, and what we're gonna do now is this, exactly the same setup, put the ball in front of the mat, but this time we're gonna use two tees and we're gonna line two tees up again, just in front. Now I like this, okay, because again, what it does is it gives a nice square kind of thing, uh, almost alignment. And what you try to do here is, is you wanna take these two tees out. Look at this. It's gonna give you the visual impact of missing the mat, of missing the towel. Then you're gonna come in square, and then when you come through, look, you're gonna imagine hitting that, uh, the tee pegs afterwards with a square face. If you're the kind of person to open your face for impact, creating slices, or closing them, creating hooks, clearly you might hit the, the front tee 
out or the back tee, but you're not gonna hit necessarily both out at the same time. So great thing here is watch this, we get ourselves set. We're now gonna take both tees out and try and hit both tees dead straight. This is gonna help you hit those tees straight down the middle. Okay, that's the goal. Get ourselves set. And away we go. Now, we might have a little bit of time now to try exactly the same thing with driver. Watch this face. Let's have a look. Right, so let's look at driver. So we're going to do exactly the two. We want to achieve exactly the two things with driver. We want to get hit the ball on the correct arc. And we also want to have an exercise that gives us feedback on whether the club face is square or not. So have a look at this. If I put two tee pegs just in front of the golf ball, probably again about three or four uh, balls in front of that golf ball, I've lined them up so they're parallel to you here, straight on line with you, and they're square to my target. They're gonna be act as two things. I've gotta hit this golf ball and swing above the tees, which will show me, give me proof that I'm swinging on an upward arc on the way through. If I was catching the ball with a drive, which a lot of people do and they don't hit it very far on the way down, I would catch the ball and then I would take out those tees and I'd just obliterate them. So putting the tee pegs in front gives us a, a evidence as to are we actually hitting up on the ball. There's the first thing. The other thing, by lining two tees up, it gives me the sense of where straight is, where square is here. So let's have a look at this in action. I get myself set nice and easy. Okay, backwards and forwards. And away we go. And I've just clipped the top of that one and flown straight over the two here. Now, I would probably show you how not to do it too. But if I did that, I might hit this ball straight over here into a neighbor's garden. And I don't really want to do that. So here's an exercise that you can get immediate feedback as to what you're doing. Very, very simple. Helps you to feel where square is. If you wanted, you could start very slowly and just hit a few shots like this, where you just practice. Look at the club face nice and square here. Just practice clipping, in, clipping the tee and going through and then gradually build it up until you've got the, you're clipping the, the tee out of the ground and then you've got that square face. Don't make it too wooden, we still want to be flowing through, but really, really important. So let's summarize a little bit. What do we do? Well, it's all about arcs and when you hit the golf ball. You hit the ball earlier in the arc, early, before the low point of the club with your irons and you hit it after the low point with your driver. How can you kind of learn to, uh, to do that and get feedback to the test whether you're doing it correctly or not? Well, the low point, put a towel behind the golf ball, but that won't only work. Remember, put a tee peg in front of the golf ball as well, about two to three balls width, and try to then smash that tee peg dead straight where you're going whilst missing the towel, and that will help you to square up the club face. Do exactly the same with the driver, tee ball behind, uh, miss the uh, tee uh, tees on the way through and it'll show you that you're hitting it on the upward arc and just square those tees off. This can help you do those two things and it gives you, it's what I call deliberate practice, it gives you feedback as to what you're doing and it will help you improve without somebody having to watch you and tell you what you're doing all the time.